Hello and welcome to another TLDR Explains video. In this one, we're going to be taking a look at Dominic Cummings' recent trip to Durham, whether or not it was legal, and whether or not he should be forced to resign because of it. If you're British, you've probably seen this story dominating the news cycle already, but for those of you who haven't, Dominic Cummings, Boris Johnson's chief advisor, apparently took a trip to his parents in Durham, 260 miles away from his home in London at the end of March. This obviously broke lockdown rules and prompted calls for his resignation, especially given that two other government advisers, Dr. Neil Ferguson and Catherine Calderwood, both had to resign when they were caught breaking the lockdown. But the government seems to have thrown its weight behind Cummings, arguing that what he did was justifiable. So what exactly happened to kick off this whole Cummings controversy? Well, on Friday 22nd of May, a joint investigation by The Mirror and The Guardian revealed that Cummings had travelled up to his parents' estate, where his sister also lives, on the last weekend of March. There were two main pieces of evidence, an eyewitness report on April 5th and a police report from Durham Constabulary that claimed that the police had contacted Cummings' father after becoming aware of his presence on the estate. This Guardian Mirror investigation originally started after Number 10 said that Cummings had developed coronavirus symptoms over the weekend of the 28th and 29th of March, but then suspiciously refused to confirm his whereabouts, just saying that he was in contact with Number 10. Anyway, at first the government refused to comment, but eventually it put out a response. And it's worth reading the whole government statement. Owing to his wife being infected with suspected coronavirus and the high likelihood that he would himself become unwell, it is essential for Dominic Cummings to ensure that his young child could be properly cared for. His sister and nieces had volunteered to help, so he went to a house near but separate from his extended family in case their help was needed. His sister shopped for the family and left everything outside. At no stage was he or his family spoken to by the police about this matter, as is being reported. His actions were in line with coronavirus guidelines. Mr Cummings believes that he behaved responsibly and legally. It's worth noting that the Durham Constabulary have a different take on this though, saying in an official statement that on Tuesday March 31st, our officers were made aware that Dominic Cummings had travelled from London to Durham at the request of Mr Cummings' father. An officer made contact the following morning by telephone. The essence of the government's defence, though, is that this behaviour was somehow essential. There's a problem with this argument, though, and that's that the word essential isn't actually mentioned anywhere in the coronavirus laws, making it not a great defence. Because even if the travel was essential, the law doesn't say that essential travel is exempt from the rules. So if the government's initial defence wasn't very good, maybe we should try and formulate a better defence. Maybe his actions were actually in line with the guidelines. After all, according to paragraph 6, subsection 2D of the coronavirus regulations, no person may leave the place where they're living without reasonable excuse, where reasonable excuse includes the need to provide care or assistance, including relevant personal care to a vulnerable person like, say, Cummings' four-year-old child. The Deputy Chief Medical Officer for England, Dr Jenny Harries, said something along these lines back in mid-March, when the government first introduced the regulations. In response to a question about what to do if both parents are ill, she said, Clearly, if you have adults who are unable to look after a small child, that is an exceptional circumstance. There's a couple of things wrong with this argument, though. For starters, it does contradict with the other pieces of government advice. Despite the government's complicated guidance, the advice from the NHS is unequivocal. If you have symptoms, as Cummings did, then you shouldn't leave your home for any reason. Also, on March 8th, Johnson specifically said that you shouldn't go and stay with grandparents. Although, to be fair, the official statement claims that Cummings planned to hand over his child to his sister, not his parents, despite them all living on his parents' estate. The last thing that's wrong is, as the official statement makes clear, Cummings didn't actually need his sister's help, and his four-year-old stayed with him and his wife in a separate house. Cummings' argument seems to be that he went to Durham because his symptoms were coming on, and that he was worried that if things got too bad, then he might need some help. So he went to his parents' estate just in case he got too ill. The thing is that this conditional argument, 
I went to my parents' house because if I did get sick, I was going to need childcare for my four-year-old. Oh, and I didn't actually end up getting sick. Isn't as strong an argument as I went to my parents' house because I actually did get sick enough to require childcare for my four-year-old. And perhaps most importantly, this isn't even the argument that the government made. The government's argument seems to be that Cummings was worried about his child and that's good enough. A load of ministers took to Twitter to defend Cummings, and again, none of them made the argument that we just made. They all basically said, if you're worried about your kids, then it's good parenting to disobey lockdown and the law, which doesn't seem like something that any minister should argue, let alone the Attorney General. On Saturday morning, Transport Secretary Grant Shapps had to deliver the government's address to justify Cummings' journey, a political hospital pass. And he didn't try and make that argument either. Anyway, the next day, Saturday 23rd, The Mirror and Guardian released a second report, claiming two things. That Cummings visited Barnard Castle on April 13th, and that Cummings was spotted near Durham on April 19th. Both of these things are backed up by eyewitness reports, with Sky News confirming that the eyewitness correctly identified Cummings' number plate on Sunday evening. Anyway, the Barnard Castle visit is controversial for obvious reasons. If you've got symptoms of coronavirus, you clearly shouldn't be visiting tourist sites. And the sighting on the 9th in Durham is controversial because this photo was taken on April 14th, which clearly shows Cummings back in London, which would mean that Cummings had recovered and gone back to London for work and then made a second trip back up to Durham. And there's no way that either of these things are legal under the guidelines. There's no rules saying that you can visit tourist attractions with COVID symptoms, even if it is your wife's birthday. And if Cummings had recovered and returned to work, then it seems that there's no justification for the second trip either. Anyway, number 10 responded to the report on Saturday night, and the response is pretty blunt. It reads, Yesterday the Mirror and the Guardian wrote inaccurate stories about Mr Cummings. Today they're writing more inaccurate stories, claiming that Mr Cummings returned to Durham after returning to work in Downing Street on 14th April. We will not waste our time answering a stream of false allegations about Mr Cummings from campaigning newspapers. If you watched our recent videos on the government's recent Twitter war with journalists, then this tone of response might not surprise you. But it's still pretty jarring that the government thinks it's appropriate not even to deign these sorts of allegations with a reply, and then to imply that the Mirror and Guardian are so politically biased in their campaigning that nothing they publish is worthy of response. This certainly seems like a pretty arrogant way for an elected institution to respond to allegations made by a free press. Anyway, poor Grant Shapps was sent out again on Sunday afternoon, and although he denied the news reports, he seemed to imply that Cummings' father's estate could count as Cummings' primary residence, which doesn't seem like a strong argument. Anyway, with pressure piling on on Sunday afternoon, Boris Johnson was forced to address the issue, and surprising no one, he made the same argument as his Twitter ministers. I believe that in every respect he has acted responsibly and legally and with integrity. If you're a worried parent, you should follow your quote-unquote instincts. And while there may be some who believe that people should be trusted to use their own common sense rather than suffering harsh lockdown terms, the thing that rubbed people the wrong way was the fact that the public had been following the rules for months and making difficult decisions, while Cummings seems to be immune. Anyway, it seemed to annoy certain civil servants so much that whoever had control over their official Twitter put out this tweet at the end of Johnson's speech. Arrogant and offensive. Can you imagine having to work with these truth twisters? As a final note, it's worth keeping in mind that there's actually two stories in this story. The first is Dominic Cummings might have broken the law, but this isn't actually all that interesting or important. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. But to be fair to him, there is a case to be made there. The infinitely more important story within this story is that basically every big government minister, including the Attorney General and the Prime Minister, seem to think that it's alright to break the law if you think it's necessary. Or at least, it's alright for Dominic Cummings to do so. Again, to stress this point, none of them made a good argument about the substance of the coronavirus regulations as we did at the beginning of this video. 
instead of debating the regulations and whether Cummings broke the rules, they simply said, if you're a really worried parent, you can break the law. Which is a frankly amazing thing to hear from a government minister. So, with the country becoming increasingly frustrated by lockdown procedures, it's easy to understand why people are getting annoyed that the government is so quick to defend their own while encouraging the public to follow rules. Many people have even remarked online how galling it is to not have been able to support family members or even attend funerals due to the lockdown rules, while government officials are defended for flouting them. In fact, the frustration isn't just limited to certain circles, as the government seemed to claim by painting the Guardian and the Mirror as partisan outlets, with the ordinarily conservative spectator even criticising the government's handling of the situation, with Stephen Daisley writing, the Prime Minister's performance this afternoon was a careful, considered declaration of contempt for all of those chumps stupid enough to obey the rules that he laid down for them. Follow your instincts, not the rules, and if the police hand you a fine, forward it to Downing Street. Boris will sort it for you. So, what do you think? Should Cummings resign? Are his actions justified as a concerned parent? Or should he be setting an example and following the rules rather than taking advantage of his status? Let us know your thoughts by voting in the polls we've posted on Twitter and Facebook. There's links to both down below. Also, please share the polls with your friends so that we can get as big a response as is possible. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for more updates as this situation and as coronavirus plays out. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible.